Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Amanda. <laughs> this is my pug Watson. He's decided to join me for a few minutes today. I am a neurodivergent woman. I have um, ADHD. I'm autistic. I have a memory disorder called SDAM and I have full total aphantasia, which means I can't visualize images in my mind's eye. So today I wanted to talk quickly on why and how people may hide their disabilities. I am one disabled person and I'm speaking from my own personal experience and from different stories that I've heard from other disabled people. So we are all unique and individual and this may or may not apply to everyone. Also, the fact that I am going to acknowledge that a lot of autistic people do not feel like they should fall under the disabled umbrella. And while I respect that, I also would encourage and invite you to look into your own internalized ableism around that situation. Um, a lot of times we have disability collapsed with something that's wrong with us or something that's bad, just part of the conversation today. And it's not disabled. Being disabled is neutral. It's just a form of human expression. There's nothing wrong or bad about being disabled. And it is a lot of the reason why people will try to hide or not disclose their disability. So I uh, made a TikTok actually a while back about how and why I hid um, having a memory disorder. Now, SDAM, the memory disorder, have a um, severely deficient autobiographical memory, and it is not um, included in like an ADA, American Disabilities Act type of situation for a disability. I don't, I don't think that having this memory disorder is a disability. Me being autistic is the disability that I have, but it is, I think, considered a neurodivergency. And so it kind of applies in this conversation. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> SDAM is still being researched. So it is not able, like every, pretty much everyone with SDAM right now is self-diagnosed. And so it literally can't be classified as a disability because it is not even something that a doctor can diagnose you with. And again, um, I could argue that having aphantasia is a disability because it, the definition of disability is like the inability to do something. And aphantasia is the inability to visualize in my mind's eye. And it actually does affect some of my daily life. And I do have to use accommodations uh, like a GPS to overcome the deficiencies that I have in my brain with visualizing to make life work, right? Um, there's a lot of people also who don't feel like aphantasia is a disability. But again, I think that's internalized ableism. There's nothing wrong with being disabled. And also there's a lot of stigma that, oh, if you're disabled, that means you want something out of society. And all I want is to be able to use my GPS without anybody making fun of me. Just because you have a disability does not mean that you need a ton of accommodations or, um, you know, support systems or anything like that. Yes, some disabilities come with high support needs and some don't. But I digress. The reason why I hid my memory disorder was... From a very, very young age, I learned and realized that my memory did not present as a normal person, a typical memory. But if I would talk to somebody about this and share my concern that my memory seemed not right, people would say, well, everybody has bad memories. Like nobody's memory is perfect. And I couldn't, I didn't have enough language to be able to express myself that okay, I understand that, but um, when I compare my experience to the way that you share your memories, there's something that doesn't match up. Like my memory doesn't work the way that your memory works. So um, SDAM affects your episodic memory. So I don't remember the events of my life, but I still have some semantic memory, 
So that means that I can still remember um, facts about my life. So how I was able to hide my memory disorder, because the reason and the reason why I started to hide it is because I just kept getting invalidated over and over and to the point where I would one question my own uh, knowing of myself, like, okay, maybe this is normal, even though it didn't seem right. I don't think it's typical for a child to be concerned that their memory isn't working. Um, I don't think it's typical for a child to wonder if they have early onset Alzheimer's disease, which was the only memory disorder I had heard of around the age, you know, around eight or something. Um, so these are not typical things for a child to have to worry about themselves. But whenever I would bring my concerns to an adult or to anybody else, they just got um, brushed aside. And I mean, ultimately, in this case, it what there's nothing to do about it. Scientists are still researching it. There's no answers. I don't even know that I'd want all my memories back, honestly. If somebody was able to turn on 42 years, 43 now, years worth of memory, I think the experience would be a little too overwhelming for me to handle, but I digress. Um, so I have semantic knowledge. So I have some facts that happened to me, like I just a knowledge. So semantic is like knowing things, like you know that... Uh, the capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. Like you just know facts. And so I know, I was going to say, I know the name of the elementary school I went to. So again, even my semantic knowledge can fade with time. So just like certain memories fade from people's lives, this is going to bother me. I think it was, I think I do remember the name of my elementary school. I'm not going to say it. Because um, I have a feeling I've used it in password protection thingies. <laughs> but um, that is a big problem for me because a lot of times um, passwords, like one, I don't remember passwords. And two, they will ask me certain things like what was the name of your first teacher if you need to have your password re-given um, to you. And I'm like, I don't know. And I can't just make up something because I won't remember what I made up. Ugh, it's a thing. So, but I do have a lot of knowledge about things that have happened to me. And yes, without having the full memory, I think over time, my semantic knowledge does tend to fade faster than other people's semantic knowledge too. Um, but the way I was able to kind of hide this is if people were in a conversation and they were like reminiscing about something in their past, I could fill in with just enough information to be included in the conversation um, because of things that I know that happened. You know, like if you were talking about your favorite toy in the 80s, I don't remember playing with any toys in when I was a child but I do know that I owned certain toys. Like I don't remember playing Barbies. I know I own some Barbie. So if we were reminiscing about eighties toys, I could probably bring up Barbies and fit into the conversation well enough. And same thing. This is one of those moments where in the middle of a sentence, ADHD brain just shuts down and forgets where I was going with it. Whew, okay, um, hiding semantic knowledge. Oh, avoidance. So the other thing that I would do to hide my memory of loss is, unfortunately, sometimes it means that I would literally avoid somebody for a while. If I knew there was something that was going on um, and there would be something that I knew I needed to talk to them, but like I couldn't remember what the problem was. I just avoid them for a period of time until I felt like it was long enough that then I could ask about it without seeming strange or weird. Um, I can't give a really specific example of that, but I, I know I've done that before. So other 
people who will hide their disabilities. A lot of, like I said at the beginning of this, a lot of autistic people are, want to hide or not disclose that they're autistic. And part of that is because the stigma around autism and around the word disability and disabled in general. I, when I first got my diagnosis, um, I came and announced it very quickly to everyone. It was such a relief to have language again for what was going on with my mind and my difficulties in life that I just wanted to shout it from the rooftops. But not everybody is safe to do so, wants to do so, wants to disrupt their life that way, but because it is, it's been life changing to uh, realize that I'm autistic and work to unmask my autism. Um, and some people want to take that as much slower journey. And all of that is completely valid with disabilities that are somewhat invisible. I mean, it's debatable about how invisible autism is because we do get ostracized whether or not we disclose our autism or not. Um, but we are able to assimilate into typical society to some degree without disclosing it. Um, but that's one reason why I advocate because I want to live in a world where everybody can be free to say, this is how I am and let's work together to communicate and to further conversations and, you know, be a community together. Um, other disabilities that I've heard where people have hid their disability until a point at which they can't anymore is um, blind people. A lot of times you have met blind people who are actually blind that you don't know they're blind because they're hiding it. They pass a seeing and you're like, what? So there's only 10% of the blind population that is 100% legally blind. I mean, not legally, I meant fully blind. Um, you can still have some remaining light perception or you might be able to see fuzzy shapes, but not enough to be able to drive safely or read or anything like that, but enough to like walk through a space um, somewhat sort of and not and people might not realize you're blind. And a lot of people will hide their blindness until they literally cannot anymore. And then they will like start to come to terms with it and start to use their mobility aids like the white cane or um, apply to a guide dog school and get a guide dog. Another same thing is um, for with a missing sense is deafness. A lot of deaf people will hide that they're deaf or that they need assistance with a hearing aid or um, they will try to pass as hearing just to get through an interaction. So for instance, a deaf person may come up and order at Starbucks and because they know the way the flow of the conversation is gonna go, they can do their entire order and not have the barista realize that they are deaf. Um, sometimes this backfires, but oftentimes they can do it, especially um, I, most often if they lost their hearing after a point at which they learn to verbalize um, as a with an accent that doesn't sound like a deaf accent. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm using that inappropriately. As far as I know, deaf accent isn't um, a rude term. Please correct me if I am incorrect in that. My goal is to be a disability advocate for all disabilities with, you know, obviously um, my special interest in autism, but I am still learning. I wanted to be a disability advocate since I was very young age, but because of the way that I grew up, I was so taught to blend in and not stand out. And advocacy work is standing out. Um, but my mask was be small, be quiet, don't make waves. And that's part of the reason why I'm so excited to have a diagnosis and be like, that's not who I am. That mask was not who I was and feel like inside and I'm shedding it and I'm learning to use my voice. So as you can tell, I'm really passionate about this subject. A lot of times um, 
when an autistic person is talking about one of their special interests, their pattern of speech gets much more fast and excitable. And that's what's happening right now because disability advocacy is such a passion of mine because it is the one marginalized group that literally any human on this planet can suddenly become part of. And so it is everyone's interest to spread disability awareness and accessibility and inclusion and advocacy and to uh, neutralize the word disabled and make it part of the conversation because we avoid words that we have fear or uncomfortableness around. If you're uncomfortable around saying a word, that means that you have some kind of like internalized um, feelings, uh, negative feelings around it, but there should be no negative feelings around disabled. Um, disabled people come in all different varieties of mental or physical, um, and they disabled people are just people, and they're part of our community, and I'm part of their community, and we're all human together. <laughs> I just, my words are starting to jumble. So I'm going to end this video. Um, thank you for watching. And um, if you feel so comfortable in the comments, you know, drop down whether or not um, you have been disclosing your autism, if you're an autistic person or, um, you know, what your feelings are around this topic. And I will see y'all in the next. Okay, so I already put up my tripod, but I had one more thing I wanted to say. So I don't know if I'll add this to the video, but just in case, um, while I'm editing, I want to have it already filmed. <sighs> one of the problems with not acknowledging disability is it does more harm than good. So for instance, my kids are both also autistic, ADHD, and they are doing an online public school. And we were working to get them an IEP, which is an independent education plan for people who aren't in the U.S. And their grades were like B's, maybe some C's, and even a couple of A's. And the administration was like, they don't need an IEP. And I said, they do because they're disabled. They aren't intellectually disabled, but they suffer from executive functioning disorder, which is part of their autism. And for them to maintain that A and B, you are not seeing all of the anxiety, the stress, the tears behind the grades that you're getting. And and they're like, but are you sure you want your kids in special education? Because, you know, stigma. And I can't believe they still call it special education, but they do. And I'm like, yeah, I want my kids to have an IEP because I don't want them to have to try to perform in a neurotypical way because they are not neurotypical. I want them to be graded in a way that reflects their brain type and so we worked on it and they have an IEP and they're doing much better their stress level is down their anxiety is down and they can get more out of school than if they were being forced because they technically are capable of not having an IEP but just because someone, like, I say the word capable, but not. It wasn't a realistic, re it wasn't realistic. Nobody should have to have that much stress and anxiety to get the same end result. Does that make sense? So um, that's why we need to remove the stigma. We just need to have people be able to do what they can do and not have comparison games and not worry about, oh, should your child be in special ed? Like, yes, because they are disabled and it's not bad. It is literally not a bad thing. They are brilliant, amazing, just empathetic, kind children. And um, I know I say the word brilliant just because that's like autistically it's lip they they're smart um but 
even people who have intellectually dis, intellectual disability, well, uh, even people with intellectual disabilities have value to our society. Like, is there's <sighs> our capitalistic world puts value on what a person can produce, and there's much more to life than that. So, thanks for listening to my little end piece here. <laughs> Bye.